What's going on YouTube? This is Necro Steve and I am finally back to present to you yet another version exclusive battle that I actually had against Mike. So uh, be sure to go check out his Twitter link in the description if you would ever like to challenge him. For he is one of my most excellent rivals. And this actually might be the last battle that I upload for this year in 2015. So that's the thing. Uh, of course, for this version exclusive battle, if you haven't realized it already, we are doing Ruby versus Sapphire. With me choosing Sapphire and him on the wonderful Ruby side. Uh, version exclusive Pokemon for Ruby include, of course, Shistri, Mawile, Zangoose, Solrock. Uh, whereas with Sapphire, you get Ludicolo, Sableye, Saviper, and Lunatone. Um, and of course, as long as we stuck to the decks, just the, the regional decks for the area, you could pick up anything else. But you had to use at least three versions of the Pokemon. And as you can see, I've gone with um, all four possible um, exclusives. So I was pretty happy with this battle. It was interesting. It gave me a chance to use a Viper, which I actually got from, um, I think, Aqua Clauncher or, or Idon uh, bred this one for me. He had an extra one. And I haven't really used a Viper before. Haven't really used Lunatone before. Mike just keeps breeding shinies when he prepares for our battles, so why not read up some new Pokemon to see if we can throw them together in a halfway uh, viable team. So, um, of course, in this battle, Ludicolo can set up the rain for itself, which I did want to make sure I have I had because, of course, Shiftry can set up sun for itself and then sweep with nasty plot. So I didn't want to deal with Shiftry doing anything annoying like that. And he surprises me with the Masquerain lead. Uh, I just started off with Macabre, uh, my Sableye, I didn't expect him to do that, but since he started started off with Masquerade, I need to go ahead and Mega Evolve, otherwise I'm going to be taking extra damage without my defenses boosted. And I just went straight for Will-O-Wisp because I didn't really know what to expect for it. I know that the, that uh, Masquerade can Quiver Dance, but I knew I could probably beat it one-on-one -on -one if it came down to that. But wow, me being so physically defensive does not help me out right here because that Bug Buzz is almost a 2 hit KO. Um, and he goes out into camera up, so I'm happy I didn't will wisp again. I was thinking about double willowing, just because I figured he might switch. But I switched out into my Saviper just to resist a possible bug buzz. Uh, if he went for a flying type move, of course, that'd be neutral anyway, so I just wanted to resist the bug buzz. Uh, he goes out into camera up and mega evolves and protects. I reveal that I have Earthquake here, and it's like, dang it, that would have done some good damage. Uh, but I don't want to stay in here. I might be able to use him later on. I figured he'd go for his own ground move. So heading out into Breaker Wing, the Solomon. So I haven't used him in so long. It's nice to get to use Breaker Wing once again. Uh, this is just a wonderful Scarf uh, Solomon set. But this for this battle, I actually switched it up and switched the item on it. Put a Life Orb on there. Um, and that's going to hurt here because he has an obviously defensive Sol Rock. I take the Rocky Helmet damage on top of the Life Orb. And then he burns me. Not good kind of basically renders Breakwing pretty useless. I do have Fire Blast on him, which might be nice for Shiftry. So we're going to keep him around. Um, I was really tempted to go into a Lunatone here just so I would have Lunatone versus Sol Rock, and this is probably the only opportunity I would have for that. But I do want to win the battle, so I went out into Ludicolo. Went just straight for Rain Dance there. I didn't want to go for the Water move because I figured he'd switch in Shiftry. And now with the Rain up, it is time to do some work. Uh, first things first, Ice Beam takes out Shiftry, so I do get the Ludicolo versus Shiftry matchup, um, which is interesting. I didn't even know about uh, C Dot existing until I encountered it in game in Sapphire when you encounter one of the. It's like a double battle, I think, and you encounter someone who has it. And um, I was like, what is that? I want that. Lotad looks kind of derpy to me. Little did I know how much popular uh, Ludicolo would be over Shiftry. Uh, not including uh, Generation 4 and 5, where you would have Endless endless Sun, and then he would just sit out there and sweep things. But anyways, though, going to go out here. I know since the rain is up, if he is carrying uh, Overheat, which Solrock can learn, it won't do that much to my Skarmory. Uh, this is actually a more specially defensive Skarmory, um, just to go alongside Macabre having really high physical defense investment. He goes for a Will-O-Wisp here. I didn't exactly predict that. I expected him to maybe set up rocks, or if he did just attack with the rain up, I didn't think it'd do too much. Solrock can also carry psychic type coverage moves, so I figured that it was not a bad switch. Uh, with the burn on Solrock, he's not able to damage my uh, Sableye really at all, which I really like. 
Uh, it would have been annoying to have to take a lot of extra damage there, but now I don't have to deal with it, so huzzah. Uh, he also shows me a few coverage moves in the form of Earthquake and in Rock Slide. Uh, last move, uh, probably either Stealth Rocks or something like that, I don't know. Uh, but now is a great time to go ahead and get some Calm Minds going. Uh, since he can't touch me with Saw Rock, either he has to switch out here, or he can stay in and try to just flinch me again, try to do as much damage as he can. Um, I just basically get some free Calm Minds here, so I don't have any real reason to switch out. Uh, if he wants to go out into his uh, Zangoose and try to do a lot of damage there, he could do that. I don't think he'd want to do that. He could also go out into Wall Rain, just because Wall Rain can take a hit. But he decides to go out into Camera Up, which tells you that Camera Up actually might have some HP investment. I just go straight for a Dark Pulse at plus two, and I was actually dismayed at how little that did. Meanwhile, Sheer Force boosted Earth Power is a 2-hit KO from that level of HP, and I don't want to uh, try really recovering up or doing any of those shenanigans because he might get a crit. And I do finish him off with the crit, but the crit didn't matter based on the first Dark Pulse that we had there. He's going to come in here and go for Ice Beam, maybe trying to freeze me, but he gets his own critical hit, breaking right through the, the jewel feud, fueled by the the Mega Evolution and all those special defense boosts from my Calm Mine. Um, here is where we find out that he's Scarfed. So I wish I had realized that earlier because I was just going to come in with Breakwing and go for Fire Blast. That is not the case. And so I lose elements for basically no reason. Um, definitely did not expect a Scarf Masquerade. It just worked out really, really well here. He might, he probably actually planned on, looked at at least the possible Pokemon that I could bring and said he's probably going to bring us elements. Uh, since he is locked into Ice Beam, though, I get to go into Lunatone and set up a wonderful Rock Polish, which means I will outspeed him on this turn. And I get to go for Psychic to knock him out. Zangoose can come out here all he wants to, but I didn't think a Shadow Claw would actually be able to KO me. He also might have Knock Off. Um, Psychic, with the critical hit, is able to KO Zangoose, and that definitely mattered. Um, unless, of course, he had a Toxic Orb or a Flame Orb. Then with the residual damage from that at the end of the turn, it might not have lived if it were the uh, Toxic Orb or Flame Orb. Um, I get another lucky special defense drop on Wall Rain, which is pretty big. He actually predicts me to switch out. I imagine they're going for Ice Beam. I could have switched out and gone into uh, someone else, but I decided to stay in there because I didn't want to lose my boost. I went for Moon Blast there, hoping to get a special attack drop because one of my last Pokemon is a Viper. And so if I got the special attack drop, that would ensure that Survivor could be able to finish this battle. Because uh, Walrang can carry Earthquake, and that can do a lot of damage to Survivor. But with Survivor out here, we just go straight for Sludge Wave. And with the special defense drop that I got earlier, that's going to be enough to finish off Walrang. So that's going to make the uh, generation battles one and one for Mike and I. We are gearing up here to do our next set. We have to go through Black and White and Black and White 2, then go through X and Y. So we have a few more of those left to do. I do hope you guys enjoyed this. I will be at some point posting kind of like a 2015 wrap up here. But whatever you guys do end up doing for the, the new year, please be safe. Make good decisions. And if you're going to make bad decisions, just ask yourself, is this something that I'm going to regret later? So at least that way, if you're going to make a bad decision, hopefully you don't make a bad decision that you regret. Then at least it might be a, a fun decision maybe. But uh, guys, happy new year, and I will talk to you all later. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.